I namen i Fadis og Fjerde i Eget, beredt til sang, de Amen. Well, it certainly is a tremendous joy for us today to be celebrating the, the uh, titular feast of our church, Our Lady of Mount Carmel. Uh, this day, 16 July, uh, in 1251 Aylesfordshire, England, is when St. Simon Stock, uh, Superior General of the Carmelite Order, uh, received the vision in which Our Blessed Lady uh, bestowed upon <coughs> his order uh, the brown scapular of Our Lady. Now this, this uh, order, the uh, Carmelite order, uh, is indeed one of the oldest uh, monastic orders in the church, has roots dating all the way back to the Old Testament. And I would like to speak about that, that, that history of the church, of this order, um, and the, the idea that the activity of God in the world, there's not this, this sharp division between old and new. As Christ said, he came to fulfill, not to destroy, not to oppose, but to build upon the foundation of before. And the Carmelite order, uh, from which comes uh, the title Our Lady of Mount Carmel, uh, the scapula of Our Lady of Mount Carmel, that is, is a wonderful example of that continuity. So we begin with this order, uh, with the prophets Elijah and Elisha. And these are 500 years, 500 BC, prior to Christ, prophets of the Lord. And they, the, the story is recorded in, in the third book of Kings. So these holy men of God dwelt on Mount Carmel, and it is upon Mount Carmel, and this is, this is a mountain in, on the coastlands of Israel. Uh, they dwelt on Mount Carmel, and it is upon Mount Carmel that the prophet Elijah defeated 450 false prophets of Baal. That is um, uh, 3 Kings uh, chapter 17 or 18. It's one, one of those two. Uh, where he calls down fire from heaven and it consumes the, the altar and the offering of our Lord, uh, whereas the prophets of Baal uh, cried all morning, all afternoon, and nothing happened because they worshipped a false god. So Elijah defeated these 450 false prophets of Baal and furthermore went to the top of the mountain and looked out over the ocean uh, and saw a cloud rising out of the sea uh, which was to water the land of Israel which had been in a severe drought for three years due to apostasy, due to idolatry and so on. And, and this, this cloud would rain down upon Israel and bring it uh, um, life-giving uh, water uh, moisture once again. Uh, this is foretold in the prophet Isaiah. I says, drop down dew ye heavens, right? drop down dew upon the earth and may it, may it uh, bud forth a savior. So that is a prophecy of the coming of the Messiah. And uh, combine this with the uh, prophecy also of Isaiah that a virgin would conceive and bear a son and he would be called uh, a mighty, wonderful counselor. He would save his people from their sins. So, so th this, this combination of Elijah seeing this vision on Mount Carmel of a cloud coming out of the sea that was going to rain down upon the earth and bring it life and, and, and salvation, um, combining with the, the prophecy of the virgin, uh, holy men of God began to, they, they stayed on that mountain, on Mount Carmel, became a site for, for prophets, for holy men, for desert monks and, and ascetics. In the Old Testament, uh, they continued to stay there and to pray and to do works of penance and fasting and sacrifice in anticipation of the Messiah that God was going to send. So for 500 years, uh, there were these holy monks living on Mount Carmel. And at the time when the time came, uh, the prophets were made ready by the preaching of John the Baptist, and they, they were converted entirely after uh, Pentecost, when the apostles, the, the, the tongues of fire upon them, they, they preached uh, the, the gospel. Uh, that is when these, these men on this mountain were converted, filled with the Holy Ghost. And afterwards, there on Mount Carmel, the, these, these men, this, this community of monks that had been uh, uh, there in anticipation, waiting for the Messiah, waiting for that virgin who would conserve and bear a son for 500 years, uh, the Blessed Virgin Mary herself came and visited them. Uh, she spent some time with them, and they, they actually spoke with her, and in her honor, built the very first chapel ever constructed in honor of the Blessed Virgin Mary there on the top of Mount Carmel, upon the very spot where uh, the servant of Elijah had seen the cloud uh, rising out of the sea. Uh, so quite a history there. So this, this tradition of, of holy men living on that mountain in honor of the Blessed Virgin uh, continued for the next thousand years. Uh, with no official recognition from the church, 
uh, and until the Crusader states were formed in the 1100s. And so at that point, uh, with the Crusaders came, they, they freed the Holy Land from oppressive Muslim rule, and Christian Catholic pilgrims began once again to be able to go to Jerusalem, and among them, some of them found these monks living on, on Mount Carmel and stayed there. And so one of them uh, was by the name of uh, Brother Berthold, who was crediting with founding the modern Carmelite order in the year 1185. So 1185, this, this is going to be um, 1,600 years after uh, monks have been living on this mountain already. So this is quite late in the, Carmel, in the roots of the Carmelite order, we could say, but that was the, where the modern Carmelites traced their foundation, 1185. Uh, shortly afterwards, in 1209, the monks there in Mount Carmel approached the Patriarch of Jerusalem, Albert, who wrote a primitive rule for the order, and this is called the Rule of St. Albert, and it was then that this was given, um, the Carmelites were given official status in the church. And this came at a very opportune time, for only a short uh, time later, the order was forced to leave Mount Carmel in 1291 uh, due to the loss of the Crusader states to Muslim aggression once again. Well, the order continued in Europe where it, it, um, it uh, was flourished initially, even though it was met with some resistance for there were a lot of new orders at this time, the Dominicans, the Franciscans, many, many others that we've never even heard about, and the Carmelite order was just one of many. Uh, but to distinguish it uh, among all the other orders as being of particular importance, and especially to our Blessed uh, Lady herself, uh, this is when she showed her divine favor to this order. As I mentioned earlier, in the year 1251, on the 16th of July, uh, St. Simon Stock, the sixth superior general of the order, received the vision of the Blessed Virgin Mary. She held in one hand the Christ child, in the other she held the, uh, a garment of brown wool, the brown scapular. And she told St. Simon, whosoever dies wearing this garment shall not suffer eternal fire. And so it is that we have uh, the roots of one of the, the most popular and one of the most powerful devotions uh, in the Catholic Church, that of wearing the brown scapular, which comes from the Carmelite order. And it's very fitting uh, that this particular order, the Carmelites, be the ones who were given that garment. Uh, Whosoever dies wearing this garment shall not suffer eternal fire. For the Carmelite order, its roots, as we have seen, uh, was to anticipate, on the one hand, in the Old Testament, anticipate the coming of the Messiah who would save mankind from his sins, and afterwards uh, to honor the Blessed Virgin by whom the Messiah had come, by whom mankind was saved from their sins. And what does that mean? What does salvation mean? Salvation from what? Salvation from the fires of hell. That was the whole reason this order had been instituted in the beginning. We're looking forward, anticipating Messiah who will save us from hell. And so this is, we can see that the scapular, the brown scapular, whosoever dies wearing this shall not suffer eternal fire. It's just a continuation of that. A very fitting order, as I mentioned, to be given that devotion. And this too is where the, um, we could say that the, the Sabbatine privilege, as it is um, known, sometimes called, which is the idea that on the Saturday after a person dies, if they've been faithful wearing the scapular, will be delivered from purgatory. Uh, this is actually a kind of a, um, uh, I don't know what you would call that, an augmentation to the actual promise. So it's, it's not actually the, 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 the indult given to the Carmelite order, to the scapular, is not that a soul will be delivered from purgatory, but that they will receive special graces and favor from Our Lady, especially on Saturdays, uh, since that is a day dedicated to her. And about this, it would be good to, to, to speak a little in that um, following this, this vision of St. Simon Stock, uh, the, the, the scapular began to be worn, and it was a long garment uh, from the neck down you know, to, the, to the knees or the feet uh, on both sides. And this is proper to the Carmelite order. Uh, the third order of Carmelites, those who were not cloistered monastics, uh, petitioned to be able to say some of the prayers and wear, and wear that garment as well, and so it was shortened for them, uh, a little shorter from the neck maybe to the waist. Uh, and as time grew on, the, the scapular w got shorter and shorter until it's that little piece of cloth that we know today. That was an indult. It's supposed to be a, a um, you know, neck-to-foot garment. 
Uh, but with the indult, it was asked, what do we have to do? What did the laity have to do to participate in the order of Carmel? For the Carmelites, they, the, the spirituality of the Carmelite order is one of retreat from the world into the desert right? and in, in honor of their foundation. And if you can't find a desert, you know, in the city or the suburbs or England or wherever, it, wherever um, the orders are, are um, founded, uh, you retreat into the desert of the soul, right? Into the desert of the cloister. And that's why Carmelites, they're a cloistered order. They're shutting the world out, giving themselves entirely to God. That's, that's the spirituality. That's what they're supposed to be able to do, designed to do. Uh, and this is why, in fact, um, 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 Teresa of Avila of the Carmelite order would institute her reforms is because Carmelites were going out, they were receiving visitors, they were um, uh, very involved in the world, and she realized this is not how Carmel is supposed to be. We are supposed to be in the desert. We, we, we can't go to the desert because, you know, we're here in wherever Spain or Italy or France, but we can spiritually be in the desert, close ourselves off, be a garden enclosed, uh, uh, and, and give ourselves entirely to God. So how do the faithful do that? If the faithful laity, who their job is to live in the world, their, their husbands, wives, businessmen, whatever, how do they participate in that? Uh, they're given what's called the third order rules, and this is common to many, many orders, is you recite a part of the breviary, uh, you say certain prayers for the order, you maybe will wear a certain habit of the order, uh, and, and then they'll give these other stipulations as well. That is how a third order person participates. So originally, the promise of the scapular was granted to third order Carmelites. Uh, you recite the office of the Blessed Virgin, uh, you, you wear the brown scapular, you observe chastity, and you, um, well, there, there were the f a few others as well, uh, which eventually all of that was granted not just to third order Carmelites, but to anybody in general, anybody who, who wished. Uh, and then uh, the requirements were commuted, which are, Oh, and I will tell you, actually, that the third order, you don't have to belong to the third order, but you do have to be enrolled in the brown scapular. That's what it means. When you're enrolled in the brown scapular, that grants you that uh, all the promises of the brown scapular to the person. So the requirements are, you, you are enrolled in the brown scapular society, you wear the brown scapular, you observe chastity according to your state in life, and you devoutly recite the daily rosary as often as you can. And that's all that's accomplished. You, you, you wear the brown scapula, you're enrolled, and that's what you have to do in order to receive the privileges. Now, the privileges received, uh, as I mentioned, are, um, this is from uh, the decree of the Office of the Inquisition in the year 1613 under Paul V. And it is that um, the Christian people may piously believe that those who have departed this life in charity and have worn the brown scapular and uh, com com fulfilled all the requirements um, may derive after death, especially on Saturdays, the day consecrated by the church to the Blessed Virgin, her unceasing intercession, her pious petitions, her merits, and her special protection. All right, so that is what the faithful receive on Saturdays after death. If you've been faithfully wearing the brown scapular, you receive the intercession of Mary her petitions, merits, and special protection. Right? It's not a get out of purgatory free card, uh, but there's a special graces attached to it. So that is the, the official decree uh, from 1613. And so there's, there's, I mean, much more to say about the brown scapular and the Carmelite order and, and, and all of these things, uh, but it's important for us, especially, this is the name of our church, Our Lady of Mount Carmel. We should know a little bit about this. And we should, in, in fact, uh, have a certain spirit of, of the Carmelite order about us. That's just who we're named after, and, and we can meditate upon that. Um, it doesn't preclude anyone from joining any third order that, that they would like, third order Franciscans, Dominicans, Benedictines, whatever. Uh, but we should have a special place in our hearts and minds, and perhaps in our spirituality, for Our Lady of Mount Carmel. This life is not our home. Uh, it is, we ought to, ought to consider it, a spiritual wasteland. We may be surrounded by luxury, by pleasure, by all kinds of, of entertainment, but, with, but interiorly, spiritually, this earth, this life, all the pleasures of earth, it's a wasteland. It is a spiritual desert. Uh, only by going to Christ, only by going to uh, the Blessed Virgin Mary are we going to find peace and joy and richness for our souls. 
And so that is something we can uh, ask Our Lady's intercession for today, is to help uh, her by her prayers. May she drop down dew upon our souls and make fruitful the barrenness, perhaps, of our selfishness, of our pride, of our stubbornness, of whatever it may be. Uh, make us fruitful in good works, respond to the grace of God, uh, and bring forth in our souls, may it bud forth a Savior, right, in terms of grace and sanctity and conformity to God's will. So God bless you all on this very great feast day for us. Our Lady Mount Carmel, pray for us. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost.